You're listening to the Four Phase Cycle Podcast with your hosts, Dr. Alex and Megan of Zesty Ginger. If you're looking to naturally balance hormones and learn how to work with your body instead of against it, you've definitely come to the right place. As a duo of an integrative MD and a functional diagnostic nutrition practitioner and best friends, we use the four phases of the female cycle in combination with functional lab work and mindset practices to transform the lives of the women we work with. We also have a whole lot of fun along the way. If you're new around here, it's best to start with season one before jumping around and plan to roll up your sleeves. Showing up for ourselves and enjoying our lives is what good health is all about. Just a quick reminder though, this information is not intended to diagnose, manage, or treat disease. Always consult with your doctor before making changes. Hi, everybody. Alex here for a solo podcast episode again. Now, I do have to say, I apologize for any background noises that you may hear today. Uh, I have my whole family in town, so I am hidden away in a closet (laughs) trying to get a little quiet. However, if you hear anything, that's why. So I apologize in advance. All right, so today what we're going to talk about is a way that I think through addressing hormones that really in the grand scheme of things is not a new way of thinking about it. However, a lot of people still have a hard time sort of wrapping their head around it. And this is true for both patients, you know, people that are, that are trying to deal with their hormone imbalances, but also providers who are addressing this kind of thing. And so generally when I do this sort of teaching, people are like, oh, that seems really obvious, right? This, it's not like a, I'm not going to say anything that seems super earth shattering. At the same time, unless you're thinking through problems in that way, and that is how they are addressed, then that just becomes a different story, right? So it's a little bit of losing the forest for the trees kind of deal, right? Because for the most part, both people who have hormone balances and the providers that help them, generally speaking, we have not been taught to think in this way. So while it's not new, uh, medicine tends to lag behind by decades, right? It lags science. It lags behind science by a couple decades. So generally speaking, we will kind of come to an understanding about things, but because medicine is such a, the machine of it has so much momentum in that, you know, how are people expected to behave? How, what are the standard of care, right? The, the, all of these things have their own momentum to them. So generally speaking, there is a period of time where then that has to be accepted and then implemented and then tested and then people sort of catch up, right? And so it's not that people are trying to do that maliciously in any sort of way. It's just that that is kind of how the system has gone so far. And of course, there's those of us now hoping to change it and aiming to do so and taking steps to do so. But we also have to understand that that is the system that we're currently dealing with. And therefore, if we hope to have a different outcome, we have to do a different thing. And over time, that adds up to become the new normal. And so with this kind of stuff, a lot of times people are where they get looped into kind of an older way of thinking is that it's very focused on addressing symptoms. It's that pill for an ill deal, right? And even in functional medicine, people then have taken, and Megan and I have been guilty of this as well, especially in the beginning, where you're like, oh, it's the same problem, but instead of a medication and a pharmaceutical, there's a supplement, right? And people go down that road for a really long time. And so we're addressing the things that have already unfolded, and now we are dealing with them. And that is 
partially driven by what I was just talking about with the system, but it's also driven by people's desires, right? They're like, I know I have acne, or I know I have an irregular cycle, or I know I have PMS and mood swings and major mood disturbances at times in my cycle, right? And for the most part, we're like, well, I don't care why, <laughs> I just want it addressed. So then there are companies who, it, appropriately so, I, I'm into it, say, I'm going to design something for acne. So people come up to us all the time digitally and are like, hey, what do you think of this supplement that says it'll cure your acne? Or what do you think of this one that'll like fix your whole period, right? And because there's such a flow for that and the demand is there, that's generally where the focus goes. And a lot of people are on different or on various portions of the spectrum when it comes to this. But as a general rule, that's the kind of thing that happens. Uh, and this also happens with lab testing because people are like, I got my hormones tested. I have high estrogen. I'm looking and researching into things that help me break down estrogen because I need to get it out. Right? So, so whether it's a symptom or an actual lab value associated with symptoms, that's generally how it goes. So then, you know, here comes the new wave or a wave of providers that started to ask questions like, well, we can repeatedly get things like estrogen out of the body over time, but what if I first ask why I am making so much estrogen to begin with, right? And so people started to focus more on that root cause. And a lot of times what I've noticed with this is that it's a bit of a harder sell to explain this sort of thing because if you're like, hey, you have acne, here's a thing for it, people are like, cool, <laughs> I gotcha, right? Or here's estrogen, it, there's, you know, broccoli sprouts that have sulforaphane and things in them. They help you metabolize estrogen and people are like, great. However, it's less sexy sounding overall to start to say, why is it that my body is making that decision and coming to that conclusion in the first place? And oftentimes what that sounds like to people is, well, don't worry about the problem or the symptom that you have. Let's figure out what's really going on. And then people, I, I think, as a normal response are like, I, it doesn't matter to me <laughs> what the root cause is. I want the problem gone, so give me the thing to fix it. And, and really the goal, though, in reality, when you think about that, is exactly the same. It's more the language and the thought process that we are all using as a medical community and the you know, participants in a medical community of what we're actually focusing on and the route that we're taking to get there. So the way that we work, um, for example, inside our Healthy Hormones Group program, which we're doing for the la we're doing our last round of it this fall. So if you've ever wanted to do that program or if you are looking to address this kind of thing at the root cause level, that you know th that's the program that we're um, that we run to address that in this way. So we we make this very practical in terms of how it actually looks for people. But let's say someone is making high estrogen, it's not uncommon for people come to us and they've been on DIM or sulforaphane or something for years. And then what I think that we're really good at providing, which is a different way than people have often been treated because of everything that I just said, is that then we start to ask these questions. You know, first it's actually getting neurotransmitter levels. Like what is the brain telling the rest of the body to do? 
and then also looking at based on all the hormones as they were made the common denominator as if you've been here for any length of time at all you know I'm obsessed with the hypothalamus because right, that's the that starts the HPAO axis hypothalamic pituitary adrenal ovarian axis and so that's the decision maker so depending on how all of the hormones were created you, it can be extrapolated in terms of what was the decision making up front right and that's where when you layer this in people come back and tell us oh I see I see how this all comes together because really f to take it even one step further is that Megan and I believe there's a time and a place for doing both right it's not that we don't address people's high estrogen or do uh, supplements for hey, I'm really fatigued it's like okay let's do something about it now while we work on the root cause that is absolutely true and and I think that when you put them together that's when people feel really nourished and supported right because you are starting to ask and this is my interpretation right but when you ask the right questions in terms of why is this happening how is the mechanism for this being created over time then that's the long-term game right people are hoping to to start to long-term address things and when you go root cause it's it's just a downstream right so it's like an avalanche one thing from the top will have multiple manifestations so a lot of times people don't put together their acne and their anxiety and their irregular cycles and their fatigue because they're thinking of it in indiscreet problems what am I doing for each of them rather than saying what would be the thing that ties all of this together so that all of them can improve across the board and of course healing is not linear the we've talked about this a lot right so so that it's not like the body is like oh hey you you gave me this everything's gonna get better at once and generally speaking while it does sometimes happen that's not the path for everybody however that's the long-term game right and in the meantime that's where we think the addressing of things really shines because you're not saying here I'm gonna address this temporarily and then you'll keep doing that forever just put that dim on auto ship and call it a day right there's a difference and especially because women fluctuate cycle by cycle and over time so what was applicable based on lab work two years ago isn't always applicable unless you have been taught how to actually correlate lab work with symptoms and understand your own body well enough which is why you know in our groups we do the lab interpretation we, we make some suggestions for each person however um, everyone learns how to interpret their own labs there's a whole portion of that that describes what is actually being seen on paper and how does it fit with what's going on symptoms because then that gives you the vocabulary of your own body to start making connections oh when my body my personal me physically does this historically this is what has been going on right and at, over time as you begin to put the puzzle pieces together then the decision making becomes much easier and and then we're not kind of going oh no what was it that happened that caused this crappy cycle right we're now starting to see patterns put it all together and then we can respond appropriately and then that's where we can go to our toolkit and pull things out but it's not that the toolkit is stat static right so it's not something that you would do forever like some of the some of the traditional setup is it's more of an interactive process of actually flowing with your body and saying what is it that I need right now and that has been one of the more empowering things that Megan and I have real realized and learned for ourselves and then taught over the years but it's also just it's such a beautiful example of how dynamic we are and there's so much power to understanding 
A, your own body, but B, listening to the cues. There's when we are addressing things at a root cause level and meeting our needs for what's going on right now, you know, having the balance of both, that empowers us to go to deeper levels with ourselves. Because more often than not, there's other things to work on than taking supplements and addressing the estrogen, right? And that's why Megan and I on this podcast talk about beliefs and our lifestyles and how we think about ourselves and addressing thoughts. All of these things come into play. And especially things when it comes to health, things like intuition, right? Rather, how do we get to the point where we are making the decisions from a place of authority of our own bodies rather than listening to a whole bunch of other people because then as you know I'm sure you've had this where you're reading up on something there's contradictory info and how do you decide then who's right right they're both experts who do you listen to and then when we take back our own power in that and learn to do things like tap into ourselves feel into what it is that we need right now and then when it changes tomorrow tap into that too and when it changes the next day tap into that too it gets kind of frustrating in the beginning when you're like man I wish I could just set it and forget it (laughs) right and I think that this is where it seems more sexy to be like I have a problem give me something to do about it and I'll just do it for a while right and that's I think a partially a driver of the system that we have it's not just only the medical community driving this but it's the way we interact with it as well and we we've done all of this right and that that's where after being on the journey for a while turning around and doing a little look at it and saying okay how does this really play out um, that, that's kind of the luxury that we have of doing this for as long as we've been doing it and then having our own personal health struggles right so we're actually living it we're not just watching other people live it and so over time we start to have so many more options instead of pigeonholing ourselves into I need to find a solution this way we start to open up you know addressing the problem now and addressing the setup of that problem simultaneously and with that basis often that is the catalyst where we go do the deeper work which again (laughs) just as a reminder people get really honed in on health and health is incredibly important but the deal is that good health is our vehicle for living a life and creating a world that we love to be a part of feel proud to be creating right and it's who we actually are in this lifetime and without health we can't do any of that other stuff as well as we otherwise would now you absolutely can because people say like oh you have to figure out your health and then you can do the other stuff heck Megan and I built this entire thing that you're listening to and and getting content from while we were not feeling good so it can be done but we also know that that was running with ankle weights on because we never had the full capacity to like feel good and do this and just be like I'm actually energetic and passionate and creative and let's let's do this thing there's women to help and so rather than looking at it as an end and some sort of like destination to be reached as we have this global look of ourselves and say we're always going to be in some way addressing root causes right because life is going to life and it happens and things do that we can be responsive at any time that's why we believe in having a toolkit that you're well versed in for you right and that's why we want our ladies to understand all of these things because it really becomes the basis for for a long time of your life moving forward right and then with that saying what does this allow me to do as I feel better who am I being in the rest of my life as well (laughs) and we always say this but how you do one thing is how you do everything right and so as we shift all of this 
that becomes such a powerful, powerful layer to live out the rest of our lives from. And it feels so good. I can tell you from you know, having gone through that process, no matter where you are, you know, as long as you keep going down that path, things get better. I can promise you that. Right? So stick with it. If you're, if you're on that path, it, there's a lot more out there for you. You can feel good and you're meant to do more in life. The approach then, you know, sit with the stuff that we've talked about today. Because if there is almost always, no matter where we are in terms of what we've chosen, there's other things to tweak and add about our health. Megan and I are always doing that work, no matter what. And because things shift, sometimes we end up going back to things that previously didn't work for us, and now all of a sudden they're applicable. So all of this put together becomes a really powerful way to feel like you're your own decision making authority and now all of a sudden it feels empowering to approach your health and when we feel empowered we're so much like more likely to stick with things and really make sure that we're following through and really just keep putting one foot in front of the other because more often than not it's the second guessing and the shifting gears like let's quit that let's do this Megan and I used to do this all the time oh my gosh like every coat would be like oh no that didn't work oh let's do this all the it was just a constant back and forth of doing random stuff and hoping that it worked with this sort of thinking it gives you the the understanding to say, hey, today's not a great day, but that doesn't mean that the path I'm on needs to get burned down. <laughs> and when that happens, it's really nice because as we stick to, you know, walking, there's a million and 10 ways to get healthy and there's a million and 10 ways to live a fulfilling life. So there's really no wrong ways to do that, but a really, great way to get off track is to constantly be jumping from thing to thing um, because then there's there's not much allowance for it to do its thing and actually serve us in the way that it is so sometimes we need to switch gears sometimes though it really pays to stick with something and that's why understanding yourself and even tapping into things like intuition and how you make decisions and what feels good for you that's the thing that really ties it together so, you know, root cause, root cause, root cause, that is all the same thing, whether it's root cause for symptoms or root cause for how we make decisions, still root cause. <laughs> all right. So I hope that this was really helpful for you in terms of making sense of how to think through the issues that you have. And then even more parts of the bigger picture. There's just so much more at play here and we have so many more tools available to us than we are often led to believe. So let me know what you think about this episode. I would love it if you screenshot it and shared with me on uh, Instagram what your thoughts were, any aha moments that you had, any experiences that you've had, because as we keep having this conversation, I'd love to keep talking about this in different ways and really getting more into the nitty gritty of what's going on for you and troubleshooting those spots. So let me know and I will talk to you soon. Thanks for coming out to hang with us on the podcast. It is our goal to transform the way women are treated in healthcare. And we need your help. We need your help to get the word out. We have a lofty goal of 1 million downloads. And we know that as this podcast grows, we're going to be able to reach more women, get more amazing speakers for you, and bring the most cutting edge information. If you found these podcasts helpful, please take a moment to text five women you know the link to the series. We appreciate your help so much. Can't wait to see you next time.